Hello all, welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be discussing about inside money and outside money. We'll also discuss that how money is induced into an economy or into the system by the commercial banks. And if commercial banks are inducing or generating and regenerating money into an economy, what is the ceiling limit or upper limit up to which they can do so? And that is where we'll learn about the terminology, which is money multiplier. And we will end this presentation with a more realistic approach towards money multiplier. Why is it needed in, in which scenario it can happen? And that is where we will learn about MPC, which is marginal propensity to consume. So let us start. Now, there are two very important aspects in macroeconomics, which, which directly or indirectly affect the growth or and degrowth of an economy. So it becomes important to understand that, okay, these two segments, which is inside money and outside money, what are they? Uh, but before that, whenever we say inside and outside, it is in reference to something, right? So inside of something and outside of something. And a very obvious question comes at inside of what and outside of what. Yeah, so when we say inside money, uh, we are referring to that money, which is being generated or regenerated or induced by the private firms. In our scenario, uh, it is more like commercial banks like HDFC or SBI in India or BNP Pariba or other banks, which are generating money into the system. What is outside money? Outside money is the money that is getting generated not because of the activities of the private firms. Predominantly, those are fiat currencies, which is being induced into the system by the central bank. So if we take an example of India, it could be the Reserve Bank of India, which is printing money uh, uh, and then inducing that into the society. So it is mainly fiat currency. We also use one more terminology for it, which we call as M0. M0 is again, uh, nothing but either the cash in circulation or, or the money that got printed by the central bank into the economy. This is what we uh, briefly touched upon. So let me read this out for you. So money issued by the central bank, which is not bagged by any private firm's product or offerings. So that is what uh, uh, the outside money is. But if the money is being created by the commercial banks in the financial system by means of uh, the loan products, then that money is termed as inside money. Now, the question that arises is, okay, I mean, we, we know that central bank do print the money, but when we talk about the commercial banks, how they are they are generating and, and regenerating the money in the, in the system. Now, let us take an example uh, that certain customers, a set of customers or uh, one customer deposited uh, money up to the tune of 100 million US dollars into the bank A. Now, in this case, what happens is when $100 million is being deposited uh, with, with the bank A, it reserve, the reserves of the bank uh, rises by $100 million. At the same time, on the liability side of the balance sheet, deposits show up because the customers can turn up anytime uh, asking for the withdrawal of $100 million. So, of course, the reserves of the bank is, is on the asset side because they can deploy it somewhere to earn, to earn more funds. Uh, but at the same time, it is a liability. Now let us let us assume that uh, the country, whichever we are, we can take any country for from uh, example perspective. There is a ten percent reserve ratio uh, regulation, which means that out of one hundred million dollars, ten million dollars is what bank has to keep, and the remaining they can loan out. So in the same example, let us assume that Corporation CRP approaches Bank A and asks for loan of uh, uh, up to the tune of uh, ninety million dollars. And, and that is what the bank can loan out because 10% is what they have to keep as the reserve ratio. And that is where over here we see that uh, on the asset side, reserves are still there up to the tune of $10 million because that is uh, regulated and mandated uh, by the central bank that they have to maintain the reserves. However, they have loaned out $90 million to corporation CRP. And that is where this loan of US dollar 90 MN uh, comes on the, on the asset side of the balance sheet. At the same time, you will see liability is still $100 million because uh, the reserves and loan, both on the deposit side, sums up to the tune of $100 million. Now, what happens when, when Corporation CRP approaches Bank A for the loan of $90 million, Bank A provides the loan. So here we are assuming that Bank A has given uh, a deposit check to Corporation CRP 
uh, on the name of Bank B. Corporation CRP takes that check and deposits that check uh, into the Bank B. And that is where the, the deposit liability uh, of Bank B goes up to 90 million US dollar. And on the asset side, you will see they will also have uh, to follow the same uh, regulation of maintaining 10% reserve ratio. So out of that $90 million, reserves of $9 million is maintained and $81 million bank B loans out to the other customer. Now, what is happening over here? We started with $100 million, but here we are saying that um, $90 million has been loaned out to corporation CRP and then $81 million has been loaned out to more customers. This will go to bank C. They will maintain a reserve ratio. They will loan out the remaining 90%, so on and so forth. And this cycle will continue. Now, how long this will go? Because, because now money is getting induced into the system. The loan that has been taken by corporation CRP will be utilized either for buying real estate or upgrading the office or giving the salaries. Uh, similarly, a loan of $81 million that has been given by Bank B will be used or induced into the society for, for uh, buying certain products or services, so on and so forth. So how long can this go? And that is where the concept of money multiplier comes into picture. So money multiplier is nothing but it gives a view that for every $1 that is lent by the bank to the customer, which is in the first link of the cycle, if $1 is lent by the bank, then how much money or funds it will generate into the society by means of uh, the lending products. So money multipliers uh, formula is pretty straightforward. It is one divided by the reserve ratio. In our example, it is uh, one upon 10%. So it's, it's equal to 10, which means that for every $1 lent by the bank, system will generate $10 in the society. But then uh, there, is, there is another uh, concept, which is marginal propensity to consume. There is a formula for that as well, which is marginal propensity to consume multiplier. Now, in the example that we have taken, there is a possibility that $100 million or $90 million have been uh, lent out to a specific customer. And that customer takes a call that he's going to save 12% uh, of the uh, total amount that has been lent out. And remaining is what he is going to uh, deploy for buying goods and services. There could be multiple reasons of taking a call of saving those 12%. Uh, but, but that actually uh, changes the amount of funds that will be induced into the society because 12% then will be uh, kept either uh, in the checking account or the savings account of the customer that might be used for uh, certain mishappenings uh, forecasted. Now, in this example, a client takes a loan and decides to save 12% of that loan amount. And this makes the marginal propensity, propensity to consume for that, customer, uh, for that client uh, goes down to 88% of the lending amount because 12% will be saved. Now, considering MPC, uh, MM will become more realistic. So it will be one divided by the fund that has been parked. In our example, this 12%, it, it goes down to 8.33, one divided by 12%. Now, this means that for every $1 lent by the bank, system will generate $8.33 in the society. So that is the difference between MM and MPC. When we took the same example in money multiplier, uh, we, we came out to the conclusion that every $1 lent by the bank will generate $10 in the society. But when we took a more realistic approach, uh, we, we discussed about MPC. And uh, that is uh, where we learned that uh, for every $1 lent by the bank, system will generate $8.33 in the society and, and not $10. So that is all for uh, today's discussion. I hope you learned something new. For more such videos, please do subscribe and like the video. Thanks a lot.